Welcome back to the Modern IT Podcast. This is episode three, and it's been too long. How have you been, Michael? Yeah, hi. Yeah, it's been a too long, too long ago. Yeah. Uh, I've been fine, pretty hectic, busy times, but it's all fun and play, as they say. Yeah. I heard you uh, went to Prague, right? Yeah, and there was a conference called Experts Live Europe. So I was there enjoying the conference, having a lot of fun, meeting a lot of people, talking uh, a lot of technology. Made yeah. Some interesting observations. I but like you, you were invited as a speaker, right? Uh, yes, I had uh, three sessions, actually. I was talking about the big data platform, how an IT pro can do it. And uh, then I dug down into two of the components, the Azure Data Lake and Azure Data Factory. And then I had a session about Cosmos DB. All right. So it was pretty busy, but a lot of fun. Yeah, I can imagine. Maybe we can uh, use uh, your sessions uh, here on the podcast as well. Maybe our listeners would uh, like to hear them. We could, yeah. We let's do that. Let's bring them up at some time. Um, yeah, uh, I will let you prepare for those. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, <laughs> you're not putting me on the spot. No, exactly. No, uh, it's it's pretty uh, let's say fresh uh, still, and it's stuff that I'm be working on for the let's say one and a half years, and I'm seeing. Some interesting stuff, not in stuff, but observations from my side, how the industry yeah, is adapt, adapting to the new, to the new IT data platform. But let's take that another time. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking we could uh, look into new authentication methods for uh, Office 365. And uh, we recently did a switch for a company that I was working with. Uh, when uh, ADFS was released uh, and I read the prereq or the recommended, recommended setup, it is for enterprise. So, I mean, uh, it usually involves a couple of servers, but for a small company to have uh, three, four servers just dedicated to uh, ADFS, it's a big leap. Most companies don't want to be able to uh, don't want to handle that many servers for for just one thing so i never really liked it for small customers but there were still a lot of them that implemented it but now there is a new uh, a new application with uh, active directory connect with pass through authentication because then you just need uh, one server for uh, aad connect and then you can install modules on your domain controller so there you get your uh, redundancy as well. Every domain controller could have a module uh, and then create an uh, outline connection to Azure uh, polling for information if there is a sign on being done. So this is a very cool feature, uh, kind of like it should have been from the beginning in my, in my view. Well, it's hard to do <laughs> the correct stuff from the start. Yeah, usually. I mean, there are others, uh, other uh, reasons to use uh, ADFS, uh, but a lot of small companies don't need that. They just want uh, to have single sign-on to their Office 365 and their golden. And uh, so what would, what would be the ultimate reason why a small company would need ADFS? Uh, or, uh, so our reason. Yeah, our reason might be uh, Amazon Web Services, for one, Cscaler, kind of where you need authentication uh, for something else besides uh, uh, Office 365. What is ADFS? Uh, Active Directory Federation Services. So you federate your Active Directory to another service? Yes, you can... Uh, you can use the same uh, account somewhere else as well, so you get a true single sign-on experience. You don't want to, you don't want uh, new uh, user accounts everywhere. You want to be able to use 
the one that is connected to your own Active Directory. So you mean like when I use my Facebook account or my Google account to log in to other sites? Well, that's the only consumer-facing part. Yeah. But the experience would be the same. That yeah. I know I know my Facebook account, and I would be able to log into several services with the same account. Yeah, the logic is the same. Uh, and one more thing that's neat about this uh, application is uh, you don't need... Uh, if you use uh, Active Directory Federation Services, you need a certificate as well. Uh, you don't need that uh, with the new Active Directory Connect uh, with Passthrough. So yeah, that's another bonus. Yeah, certificates is always difficult to. Support. Might not be difficult, but it's the it's the added uh, the added step. It's something you have to remember. You have to make sure they. Uh, their validity period doesn't exceed so uh, everything uh, stops and you have yeah. to buy one as well if you're if you're into that so yeah yeah and uh, that the, the certificate exceeds the date that's a common issue in the IT world where it happens constantly people forget to renew it and the services just stop yeah absolutely um, if you're looking at uh, direct connection, for example, I've been in multiple situations where I get a phone call and uh, half the uh, employees on-prem can't work. Uh, and you start to look into it, okay, they're, they're using direct access. So probably the ones that's, probably the computers that are not running are connected to direct access. So even if they're on-prem, if there is issue with uh, certificates or uh, uh, location services, it can stop working. So uh, yeah, it's very very important to make sure that the certificates are uh, are not expired. Yeah, do you have a good method for that? Not really. Like everybody else, uh, write them down. Yeah. There are yeah, there are management tools for this as well. Uh, most uh, uh, most monitoring tools have this uh, feature as a add-on option or already included. We should put an out here that we can lift this question in a, in the sense of Azure Key Vault. Yeah. So today you can leverage Azure Key Vault to manage certificates, as long as with other uh, secrets and so on. But yeah. We can is, we can touch that on another. Yeah, is there some automation going on there to uh, to check for yeah. certificates and? Yeah, it does. Uh, you you have your certificates in the key vault, uh, and you orchestrate some dates. Tell you it's time, and you would be able to look. Uh, as I said, let's take that in another key vault, another key vault, in another podcast where we are more prepared for that question. Yeah, absolutely. I, I haven't, I haven't used key vault in a certificate sense, uh, but we have discussed it. Okay. Uh, uh, I have used key vault in uh, in uh, storing domain credentials for auto deploying uh, virtual machines, and also for having secrets that applications should use for accessing other services yeah i guess it's more uh, meant for that i'm assuming well they're adding the the, the functionality for sir, to address this yeah so but yeah there i think it's an early state to say you could leverage theories but again i have no experience with it yet yeah I think uh, Open Manager uh, is one that you can uh, configure to uh, to uh, check the the expired date of of your uh, certificate, so you can get an alarm. Uh, some uh, just uh, put it up in their uh, service desk uh, uh, software for a reminder, so they get a, a reminder when it's like one month uh, left to to renew the certificates but it's easy to uh, to miss uh, 
to miss out on this. And uh, the cost is heavily as everything can uh, stop. But one thing uh, that's more uh, a positive about the Active Directory connection connect with uh, pass through is that it also supports multi-factor authentication. So you can use your phone as well for this. Yeah, that is that is nice. Everybody wants to secure your stuff. Yeah. I, I really, really like this one. We have uh, converted uh, uh, one or two companies uh, from uh, ADFS to this, and uh, they are very happy with uh, the results. Yeah. And they're using multi-factor now? Uh, no, not at this point. No. No. But they are paying for less servers, so they are happy, happy. And they are set for added security. Yeah, that's another that's another topic with them. Uh, but uh, the guidelines for uh, ADFS is uh, four or five servers, so you have the redundancy part. Uh, yes. And for a small company, that's a lot of servers for for a little feature. But if you if you would look at a little bigger company, ADFS is a good solution and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's still it's, it. yeah it's still a, a very valid uh, configuration yeah i uh, i remember about two years two and a half years ago uh where you kind of found it to be great to have your adfs deployed in in a cloud in in the cloud on vms in the cloud so in, in our case, it's Microsoft Azure. That's where we had the use cases. Yeah. So I had uh, I was in contact with several companies, three that had their own data center. And when they had an outage in the data center, nobody could log in to their Office 365 because they had their ADFS in the data center. Yeah, yeah, of course. So if you switch it around, if you have your ADFS in the cloud, higher SLAs, potentially or better uptime, Hopefully. then you would be able to access access all of the servers that the ADF has pointed to. Regardless if your data center went down or not, you would still be able to log into the other services that you pr- consume. Yeah. It could be cloud services. Yeah. And that was one of the issues I had with uh, ADFS in the beginning as well as if they're not uh, operational, even people on the outside won't be able to to access uh, uh, their Office 365 uh, subscription. I, I never thought of it as a good service for for that particular segment because uh, it's so. Uh, it's a single point. Yeah, it's a very single point of failure. Even with uh, uh, redundancy, it still it still felt. Uh, Nah. So in this new service, is there any SLAs coming with it? Because uh, now you you take away the whole five servers that that you needed for ADFS to be high available and redundant. Yeah. So now you and have now mod- you... you have modules instead, and if you put the module on every DC, that's uh, you can't get any better redundancy to that and than that because. If they're all down, then your entire company is basically down. So, uh, yeah. And um, I, I know Microsoft is still working on new features on this as well. So it will be fun to uh, to uh, look into this uh, a bit later as well and see what they've done with it. Nice. Yeah, and just uh, uh, just a note from. Uh, from uh, a work project, uh, maybe this could uh, benefit someone else that is stuck in uh, an Active Directory Federation service that they don't really need. I'm sure there are a lot of companies uh, in this position, and uh, it's easier to go from Active Directory, uh, yeah, ADFS to to the new setup than uh, to revert it. That's a good one. So try it out. The new what what's the service called it's called active directory connect with pass through authentication yeah try it out and uh, please leave a comment or a follow up question if you have one yeah 
I'll probably come back with some questions next time. Yeah, sure. Um, did you yeah. have did you have any topics for today? Uh, yes, I would. Um... I would want to uh, talk about something called the side state configuration. All right. And uh, so it's all about automation and automation is, is something you always try to do. If you need to do anything twice, try to automate it. So you don't have to do it the second time, basically. Correct. <laughs> but the side state is, is uh, the side state configuration is even more than that. So when uh, when i'm working with uh, with azure the virtual machines in particular uh, we deploy the virtual machines with uh, azure resource manager templates and that kind of just gives you the infrastructure as code so i can deploy virtual machines with the template as infrastructure as code once the vm is deployed i want to do some post deployment configurations and yeah. the desired state is is a great uh, great tool for that and there's there's uh, some big differences if you do it on premises or you do it in cloud uh, or if you use azure automation to orchestrate your desired state configuration settings so uh, yeah uh, there's um, there's some topics here we can dive into yeah, please. Uh, I would like to uh, yeah. learn more about this one. Okay, so imagine you have a small company that has five servers. Yeah. So these five servers probably are doing different things. But if they would uh, need to scale one of the services, say they would have a web server and they need another one or they need to test something, then they want to copy that current web server and do the testing. Yeah. If you have desired state configuration uh, set for that server, uh, you have a desired, uh, the, the configuration tells you what state server should be in with web server installed, uh, with the right configurations behind it, even uh, antivirus exclusions and so on. So that is the state of the server. If right. I deploy a new one, I enforce that state on a new one without logging into the server and doing any manual scripting. I, I put my desired state on that server and it enforces the state on the server. Yeah. So, and, and how is this done? Uh, in Azure, you would do it with Azure automation. Uh, so you have to, first you have to make your desired state configuration file. You compile it in the, in Azure, and then you have it as, as a state that, yeah, basically in the, if you, if we talk from the portal and just to make it visual, yeah, you can choose your VM in the portal and you can say, I want this desired state file to be deployed on this server. The reason why you can do that is you would have uh, the extension Azure automation, Azure automation, desired state configuration extension enabled. So Azure resource manager can enforce this on the server with a system with system account. So you don't have to log in, you don't have to give any rights or so on. Okay. So pretty much perfect for the testing. No, well, it's perfect for testing. It's even better for production. Yeah, sure. If you have the the perfect uh, server and you you want to scale, but um, it sounds like it's also good for testing. If you have a if you have a server uh, that's configured and you want to make some changes, but you're pretty sketchy about it and you want to push that to a new uh, to your new server. I guess that's one way to go. Yes, but you can. You should also look from it from a operations perspective, a server management perspective. So you work in the IT department or in, as the consultant. You are responsible for the for the servers. Right. If there's if there's anything wrong with it, 
you log in and you fix it. And then you do this continuously over some years. If you would have desired state configuration set on this, you would fix the issues with the desired state configuration file. And then you wouldn't log into the server because if you do log into the server, eventually you have something called configuration drift. Say you have 10 servers uh, that should look exactly the same. Yeah. But if you've gone into them and done some configuration here and there manually or, or any other way, you have configuration drift. Yeah, I, have see, I see what you're saying here. Yeah. So if you have your desired state, you enforce it. If you go in and fix anything uh, and you have set this up to be done on a pull or push mode, so a uh, push could be that you schedule it. You, you do it twice a day, always enforce my configuration. And if someone had been on the server, done another change, you would still enforce you. So you, you kind of secure that the states will always be the same on the servers. Right. So, so basically you can uh, see this like a base image uh, with the desired state configuration that you push to nine others so they maintain the same configuration yeah i would say it's more like a configuration file it's image independent yeah 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 <laughs> yeah but if in in a thought process yeah if you've done images before you understand the the, the value of having an image so it's the same here. You you understand the value of having the reference state of the server in a configuration file. You can push out and on your environment. Right. And the good thing with doing it in Azure is that you have this automation set up behind it. So it's a service. And I think actually this is where the PowerShell workflow Azure automation originated with the serverless thinking because it's a serverless service you just tell them i have my powershell workflow i want to push it and i don't have to think about the back end so let's say you would build your desired state configuration push pull server on premises and then you uh, depend on that server to do its task with enforcing the state of your of your it environment if that server goes down, you lose your ability to, to enforce the state on your on your server. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it runs as so, a service instead. Yeah. So if you want to do it on premise, then you have to do it with two servers and so on and have it high available, etc. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So in Azure it's only it's just a, it's just a service. And you tell it to run and or you schedule it to run at any time yeah sounds good yeah. i think i'm gonna have to look into that a bit more yeah it's not uh, something that i've worked with no that's it's really nice i had a i had a case where uh, the customer they wanted an r server so you know the data scientist language r server yeah with r installed r studio and there was like five other applications they wanted installed. Uh, so I made a desired state configurations uh, setting, put it in Azure, and now the customer themselves, they deploy the VMs with a template yeah. that we built. So they choose the idea. Yeah, they choose, I want this VM and uh, it asks for all the tags and then it get the, gets deployed. But then afterwards, uh, if the server is tagged with a certain tag, of course, tagged with a tag, uh, depending on the tag, it would uh, either go with the full automation uh, with services we built behind, or it would leave it blank. And then they could choose the desired state. And in this case, it would be the R server. And then when they choose that, all of those applications gets installed with the parameters that they defined and then they will have their R server 
and then the data scientist team could start working. Yeah. Well, that so sounds good. Pretty, pretty neat yeah. automation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then this is our service. Uh, it's free. It, it has, I think it's free up to a certain minutes running. Or is that only the automation? Well, that's something you could look up maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So that was it. Desired state configuration. Great. That's it for today. I hope you'll uh, listen to us next week as well. Yeah. Let's try to get one out weekly. It's yeah. That would be while. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, ambition is there. Yeah, for sure. Well, Real life just <laughs> comes in the way sometimes. It sure does. But uh, we'll see you again soon. And thank you for today. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.